Jesus wants you to have. Amen. You start to look at things from an offensive, offensive uh, position instead of the defensive all the time. Amen. I'm like this. You know, defense is back here. The offense is like this. What's up? <laughs> now you got that. I had to bring it down to North County language. What's up? Do you get that? That's what Jesus is wanting you to look at your problems with. Oh, yeah? All right. It's on. Look at it that way. See what happens. You'll back down a demon. Don't act like a wimp in front of a demon. Now we're getting somewhere. So in 23, it says the same day, the Sadducees, so these are the other cats, the liaison with the Roman government. They try doing something. They don't believe in the resurrection, and they don't believe in heaven. They don't believe in this. They don't believe in that. See, these guys are calling Jesus, same thing that Judas called. We call him rabbi, or we call him teacher, but we can't call you Messiah or Lord. Because we haven't quite got our head wrapped around it. If you're waiting for your... <laughs> Watch me. If you're waiting for your mind to get around the mind of Jesus, you're going to be waiting for a long time. I'm still trying to deal with how they get cheese in a can and I can squirt it on a cracker. <laughs> well, when I figure out Jesus, these guys are on fire over here. It must be because Geeson's over here or something. <laughs> you ever see that? Well, I can't. I'll call him a teacher and a prophet. That's what the world does. Are you? Give me a break. Everybody knows he's the Messiah. The demons know he's the Messiah. They shudder at his name. I was just saying his name. Yeah, when you, when you don't know what to say, say his name. Don't think up some big concocted prayer oh I'll call down the chariots of fire and i'm gonna just say the name of jesus if it works once it works great twice Amen. you just say his name just walk around your house walk around your property and say jesus 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 amen just walk around it just feels good amen that's what you say you say jesus when you don't know what to say just say jesus and everything from there will work out you say, boy, that's, that's, that's a bold statement. Oh, you don't know how bold it is. So we're getting this love walk thing down. So these guys, these Sadducees, they don't believe in the resurrection and all that kind of mess. And then they go, seven brothers were married to this wife, and I'm paraphrasing all this stuff. And, and when we die, <laughs> they're trying to knock Jesus off his square. You ever see people try to knock Jesus off his square? Here, 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 I don't know if I told you guys this or not. Correct me if I did. The way, that, the way they try to knock Jesus off his square now is what they'll do is they'll allow some, some highfalutin pastor to be interviewed on, on national television. And they'll get some famous talk show host to go, Pastor so-and-so, do you really believe that Jesus is the only way into heaven? <laughs> and that pastor will get the stuttering. And he will, well, it's just, you, what they need to do is, is, is take the camera off of him and put it on me over here. <laughs> and when they interview me and they say, Pastor Pat Rankin, do you totally believe that the only way to heaven is through the blood atonement of Jesus Christ that was done on Calvary? And I go, you got that right, Jack, and you need to accept him. Hey, listen to me, and you all can't get that unless you're born again. How do you like that? Good golly, Miss Molly. That's it. I said it. I believe it. That settles it. Hallelujah. Interview me and see what happens. Hallelujah. Well, we're not really sure. And, you know, we think God is just, you know, hey, let me tell you who God is. Y'all are going to meet him one day. And every single cotton-picking one of them are going to say Jesus is Messiah. They will say that. Amen? 
He's in control of all things. Amen. Hallelujah. And he wishes that nobody perishes. Don't get me wrong. Christianity is all about love. It ain't about hate. I didn't write the book. I'm just preaching out of it. Somebody's got to preach it. Well, maybe God would be okay if, if I would. Uh -uh. No. Well, maybe we're all created. Uh, no. You're all created in the image of God. Amen. So we're back to this love walk thing. Verse 34, he says, hearing that, this, that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees like he always does, the Pharisees, the Pharisees ramp up the keystone cops again. Hey, let's get all together. He shut down the Pharisees. Now is the time for us to shine. Our group, it's time for us to shine. Here's what he says. One of them, an expert in the law, asked him this question. How does he address him? Verse 36. Teacher. Teacher, pal, homeboy. You'll get reverent one day with Jesus. So these guys, again, the Keystone Cops are saddled up. He says, teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Because I'll tell you what, I, I only deal with the greatest. So G G Jesus bust his bubble here. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So back here, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Your heart is the will that is beaten inside of your body. It gets you to do things you normally wouldn't do unless you're born again. By going around telling people that you love them. I never thought I would tell a dude that I loved him. <laughs> until I got born again. Amen. You might need to do that right now. Start practicing right now. Just look at your neighbor and say, I love you. <laughs> do it anyways. Bearded man to another bearded guy. See, you're going to be doing that in heaven. You might as well get some practice in right now. <laughs> you say, it, Jesus is looking down right now, Terry. He goes, what are you all doing? I go, well, just practicing Jesus. <laughs> just practicing. I'm, I'm practicing my love walk. Because Jesus knows if you get this down, you'll get the rest down. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Soul is, is like I told uh, the, uh, the last service. Your soul is your affection. It, it's, it's what oozes out of your pores. Like if you're jogging, sweat oozes out of your pores. If you're a teenager, it's acne. Amen? <laughs> it is. My daughter, my daughter puts Clearasil on sometimes now. That's your affections if you're spirit filled. It oozes out of your pores. Something pours out of a man that's born again. Something's pouring out of Travis Davis where he wants to spend his time with young men and teach them about the love of Jesus Christ. Stand up for just a second, Travis. See, Travis has the things of God on his mind. It's oozing out of his pores. Amen. Amen. You can't deny it when, it when a guy like him goes in and is talking to all these kids that are headed to jail or hell or wherever. And it oozes out of his pores. It's in his soul. It's illuminated out of his soul, Mr. Ruble. There's something about him that just goes, you know what? That, that dude reeks Jesus. Amen. 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 I think that's wonderful, don't you? And then with all my mind, that's my intellect, Terry. I need to go to yours and Carl's Sunday school so I understand why I love Jesus and what he's about. Carl, and I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind and, and, and learn how to, to pull down strongholds and demolish them and things like that. I need to know that kind of information. That's what he's talking about here. He says, this is the first and the greatest commandment, and the second is love your neighbor as yourself. And you guys know the story about the Good Samaritan. <laughs> Everybody passed by, the Levite, the priest passed by, but the one that stayed there was the Samaritan guy. Samaritan guy was considered a half-breed. Half-breed, he was mixed with such and such and such and such. Amen? There's only one race, it's called the human race. 
We pigeonhole people. All right, good. We got one honest guy besides myself. <laughs> well, he's there and she's this and this. Amen. That ain't the way it works in heaven. Everybody's all the same. Everybody down here, Jesus looks at them all the same. But let me tell you actually how Jesus pigeonholes them. Saved? <laughs> Unsaved. Remember, the only two categories. So love your neighbor as yourself. And some people, not at this church, are really in love with themselves. If you could take just a thimble full of your mere time, or your teenagers, you ever seen how much time a teenage girl stands in front of the mirror? Love your neighbor as yourself. You say, who's my neighbor? Everybody that you come in contact with. Stand with me. Let's see, I love the Lord. It's all in my heart. All my soul and all my mind. Let's get that down. And you're saying, Pastor, so what you're saying today is if you get this love walk with Jesus down, everything's going to be all right after that. I'm telling you right now, that's where it starts. And it ends in heaven. Now, you'll go through some rocky times being born again, and sometimes you go through persecution. But Jesus promised that he would be with you in them times of persecution. Remember this, my friends. He will either take your hand and walk you through the fire, or he'll take your hand and remove you from the fire. Either way, you'll come out on top, and you say, boy, I would love to love Jesus, but I, I, I don't know how to do that. I've never, I've, never, I've never really loved Jesus. I don't even know who he is. Well, today, he wants to reveal himself to you. He, he wants an intimate and personal relationship with you and here's the deal you can't call him teacher teacher doesn't get you into heaven rabbi even a hebrew word like rabbi doesn't get you into heaven knowing the priest knowing the nun knowing the pastor knowing some people in the church if your aunt edna was part of the church that doesn't get you into heaven only the love of jesus christ dwelling inside of your heart gets you into heaven Let's pray. Lord, today we realize that we truly are running out of time. And it looks, Lord, like if we don't turn back to you, it's inevitable that this whole thing is going to be shipwrecked. Lord God, it's time to let the government rest on your shoulders, like the Bible says. Bring this nation in this church to its knees and ask for forgiveness and then Lord God I know that you will restore this land if there's anyone here today who doesn't know you as Lord and as Savior that they would come and receive you today for all of those who need physical healing who need spiritual healing let them come forward for all those who need to join the church today let them come forward Lord I pray that your Holy Spirit deals with each and every person that is here today in your name that we pray. And God's children said amen. 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 Let's give them a hand clap of praise in this house. Hallelujah.